I won't be a slave. Oh, didn't you know never trust the wicked when the cards are on the table? They tell wickedy lies and fables. Unable to be dropping the prophecies like we be. Flipping off through the scriptures like Exodus 15 and 3. Ooh, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. How could you think to even add much more? Or is you lacking like understanding? Because these pork chop preachers be lying but still demanding. Looking money from your pockets, though. But never to teach you when they reach you that the son of God's a so called Negro, a bully gray afro and dark. That's what we step in to tell these lies apart. Scripture after scripture. Let it rip you if you wicked. The Israelites are coming from east into Pacific. Scholars and prolific with the scriptures like Solomon. All praises to the most high that he chose. Now we can. Here's a little something about the hidden truth. Uh -huh. Somebody should have told you about the hidden truth. What? You can't get away from the hidden truth because it's real. What's real? It's real. That's right. Here's a little something about the hidden truth. Uh -huh. Somebody should have told you about the hidden truth. What? You can't get away from the hidden truth because it's real. What's real? It's real. That's right. As it is written. The truth is sitting inside of a simple mind Of a holy nation that doesn't know that they're divine So let us take this time to run the line on the future Prophecy of how the devil seduced you There's more religions than there are pigeon dung But none of these religions can tell you where you truly come from This message is for the ones they call minority In the U.S. they get those up under Satan's authority The mass majority of my people don't have the true Knowledge and understanding of the Bible that they're the Jews That's why Christ and all the prophets have a dark complexion So any foes of the facts don't have no protection We make connection with the past with knowledge of the ever-present Bible to help my people with their suicidal tendencies because they tend to be led astray. We're looking for that one trait, headed for the payday. Here's a little song about the hidden truth. Come on. Somebody should have told you about the hidden truth. What? You can't get away from the hidden truth because it's real. What's real? It's real. That's right. Here's a little something about the hidden truth. Uh -huh. Somebody should have told you about the hidden truth. What? You can't get away from the hidden truth because it's real. What's real? It's real. That's right. It's real. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome to another exciting edition of The Hidden Truth. I'm your host, Priest Ahawam Mayam. With us is Priest Kazakia. Shalom, brothers and sisters. And also with us is our reader, Priest Arya Ama One. Shalom. All right, on today's show, uh, we're going to continue where we had left off in the baptism class. And just before we go into that, I want to let you all know, for you joining us on our YouTube and, uh, and on our uh, website, that you can catch us on the hidden truth12.com. Uh, you can also catch us on YouTube under the Israelite School of Biblical History and Practical Knowledge. Uh, we're affiliated with the brothers that teach out in the elders that teach out in Atlanta, Georgia, and also with the uh, with the school in um, San Antonio, Texas. So you can you can uh, you can also access them through us. We're on Facebook under the uh, the Israelite School of Biblical History and Practical Knowledge. And also, uh, you can you can catch us. You can uh, email us. You can catch us on the phone. You can text us in on the show live uh, with your questions or comments. Um, we ask that you text us so that way we can go ahead and get them on the air. Uh, you can also call in live uh, at the number that she puts on the screen here. Right, right. The texting. We're not going to do the texting anymore. Okay. Uh, so they can call us live. Uh, you know, and also. We would like to say shalom to uh, the, the brothers in San Antonio, Ka uh, Kawakab, uh, Banabad, uh, Mashaba, and Awar Na'ar, okay? Uh, so if you brothers and sisters, y'all have any questions or comments, I think we have, we're linked also to their YouTube page. Right. So if they, they can go and check out their shows, check out uh, Kawakab. Uh, Kawakab 1. Kawakab one, but his blog talk also, I think I think it's on our web page also. If you go to yes, uh, uh, the, our, our website, right. So uh, you brothers and sisters, just to let brothers and sisters know, we wanted to give out a little more information because a lot of people are checking out our YouTube page uh, on that. And uh, like Priest Thahawam said, we're gonna go directly back into this baptism. 
Look out for our Halloween show. Uh, we're going to put that out next week. Our timing was off. It should have been out today, but we wanted to finish this topic up because it is, a, it is an important topic, and we wanted to uh, finish it up. So we're going to go directly into it and finish off where we left off, okay? So if you, if you go to our YouTube page, we left off at uh, 1 Peter 3. Uh, we're going to go back 19 to 21 and finish off those scriptures um, touching on the main point. On this topic, we went <coughs> from a perspective of the law. We touched on showing that Christ came to edify us and give us more understanding of the law and of, of all these uh, carnal things we did in the law, such as baptism and showing that the, the, the carnal aspect of baptism spiritually, what was it to be applied to, uh, you know, when Christ came. So uh, we went over that. And um, before you go to First Peter's, you know, no, go there. Read that. First Peter's 3, verse 19. First Peter's chapter 3 and verse 19. Uh-huh. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, mm -hmm. which sometimes were disobedient, when once, when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. Right. So once again, this, once again, you have, you have, um, uh, Peter, okay, giving in an example, okay, and we're talking about the days of Noah. Right. We're talking about the, he's bringing out the incident where <clears throat> eight souls were saved, and then also you had. A lot of people were killed with water. Right. So um, we got to ask ourselves this when we look at this scripture. Why was this put here? Why, why was Peter making it a point to bring this out that th th this water was used for this purpose? And then we're going to get a better understanding and really understand about this baptism, that it wasn't meant. Water wasn't going to save you. Water wasn't going to save your soul. And uh, water wasn't going to bring you to the salvation that Christ intended for us. And that's the understanding we want to get clear because we came out of the religions. Religions taught us that uh, the baptism of John, that if you didn't or weren't baptized by water, you wouldn't be saved. That's what religions taught us. Yeah, some of them went as far as to say, especially Catholic, that, that you were going to hell. Yeah. You died without being baptized. There you go. You, you were going to hell. Right. So they, they have they have these different doctrines that, you know, if, if a baby isn't <laughs> baptized like that, then they're going to hell if they right. died before they were taken to the church and had water right. poured on their head. Right. And this is ridiculous. If you weren't dunked in a pool, in a public pool or in a river, Right. Then you were going to hell. Right. You know, <laughs> right. Right. And you you know, one thing, brothers and sisters, we got to understand this. And I I try to bring it out a, a little before in our last show is that if you go to all the scriptures, uh, you know, just pointing out where they were dunked in water. Right. And we wanted to touch on both aspects. Right. We wanted to touch on showing that Christ did baptize them. And we did in our last show. Christ baptized and washed the apostles feet. Right. But we also wanted to show what was the purpose of that. So, you know, and this is where a lot of lack of understanding and a lot of scriptures come from. You know, they, they put all the scriptures on love, but they don't put the scriptures on hate. Right. So you don't really get a true understanding of what the scripture is saying on that topic right. and on that specific point. And that's where a lot of lack of understanding comes from uh, uh, of the scriptures. Right. Uh, you know, and the churches do it a lot. And uh, we got to be careful Israelites, we got to be careful from doing that because, you know, I put all the scriptures on, you know, Christ baptized and then I just that's the show. Then I'm not really giving the true understanding. Right. And I and I'm hoping this topic we we touched on both perspectives. We, we haven't finished yet, but uh, we did bring out they did continue to baptize. But what was the purpose? And this is where we're coming down to in this topic. Why is Peter pointing this out to the Israelites, to brothers and sisters about baptism? And let's let's look at that. Let's look at what he's his point is with first Peter's three, verse 20. Read three and verse 20, uh -huh. which sometimes were disobedient. Read when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah uh -huh. while the ark was a preparing wherein few 
that what that is eight souls were saved by water. Read the like figure. Where right. So once again, brothers and sisters, you know, I can leave you there. Like we, we got young brothers and sisters doing like the like figure. There you go. Read on the like figure where on two even baptism do it also now save us. Th there it is, brother. Baptism saves you. <laughs> That's the light. But you got to read the scripture in its context. We can't take it out as context and the whole point that Peter's trying to bring out. He's trying to bring out that it was an example. It was a like figure. Water was being used to save. It was a figure. It was an example. And when you go to Hebrews and, and go into the law, as we're going to touch on a little bit, it shows you that a lot of things done in the law were a figure, were an example, were uh, 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 to show us the things that were going to come when Christ came. Right. Even John. Even John was saying that the, he that cometh after me right. is mightier than I. Right. You know, the, this, is, this is the one that I'm preparing the way for. I'm dunking you in water and everything like this to mm. show you the way that this man's going to do it. Right. And his, is, his baptism is going to be a mightier than I. Right. And for y'all that, you know, I'm going to go to the camera on this one. For y'all that are out there in our YouTube audience that are Israelites already and you know and you want to get technical, Go to your Strong's, go to your, go to your uh, definitions of John the Baptist and find out that his name was John the Immerser, meaning he immersed you. He, 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 put, you, he put you down and surrounded you in a substance. Mm. That's all that meant. Now, when, Christ, when he said Christ was going to come, he will baptize you, he will immerse you in the Holy Spirit and fire. Right. So he was saying that that baptism, that immersing was going to be mightier than his immersing. Right, there you go. You understand? So go ahead, get technical, but go look it up. Go into this, go into those books that you, that you pride yourself on in your knowledge and go look that up because you're being so technical that you're not showing the people the right point of baptism. Right. Which was that Christ was mightier and what did right. Christ do? And, and the, you know? once again, why is Peter bringing this out? Right. Why is he making it a point to remind us that we're saved by water, which was a like figure? Right. Read. Not the putting away of. But not. He makes it a point to tell us. Right. As you brothers and sisters are baptizing, because they were still doing it back then. It's obvious. And when we go to Acts 19 and 1, they were still baptizing with water. Right. But what was the apostles trying to show all of Israel? Read it again. Not the putting away. Why did he, why is he showing them not the putting away, read? Of the filth of the flesh. Because yes, they were still baptizing. Right. But they didn't get it. Right. They didn't understand what Christ came to bring them. Right. So he was pointing, pointing it out to them once again, not the water. Right. You got everybody's baptizing. You're going across baptizing everybody and dunking yourself in the water. But this, what baptism was really meant for, right. not the water. Read that one more time. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. Not the, the flip. Like the brother said, a good point on YouTube. If you dump a homosexual in the water, right. it's not going to take away his homosexuality. Right. What is supposed to take away his homosexuality as it goes down, it tells you the conscience, right. your mind being purged and cleansed with the wisdom, the Holy Spirit right. changing your ways. Uh, if you dunk a drug dealer in the water, he's not all of a sudden going to, now I'm going to stop selling drugs. It has to be in his conscience and right. his mind to do that. Right. Go, go to Psalms 51. You read on really quick. But the answer of a good conscience. But the answer... Listen to it again, brothers and sisters, because if you didn't understand what the apostles, remember this, we got to think and we got to use our head, all you Christians and all of us Israelites, is that the Bible doesn't contradict itself. Peter isn't going to make a point to show you not of the water and then tell you, oh, you're saved by water. That's contradiction. They were still carrying it out, but what the apostles was trying to get them to understand is that, yes, baptize yourself, that's fine, but it's not about that. It's not about the water. It's not, that's not going to cleanse you. Not 
the removing of the filth of the flesh, but what? But the answer of a good conscience. Right, and what cleans your conscience? What cleans your conscience and what is going to clean your mind? So where are you at? Psalms chapter 51, um, I think verse it's, 7. Okay. Uh, Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Uh -huh. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart. Right, and this is what this is what David is praying. Right, so he's showing you the physical, the hyssop, and that's a, that was a purging herb, and and the, the uh, washing with hyssop and, uh -huh. and wash me and make me clean and whiter than snow. Right, but then he said he showed you what the symbolism was. Right, was that he wanted you to create in me a clean heart or a right. clean mind. Right, and uh, and this is what right. this is what the 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 uh, the apostles. And the prophets that were in the spirit, they understood. Exactly. They understood it. It's not about me. It's not about what. Read on it because it's, it's going to tell us. Go ahead. Oh, oh, oh God. Uh huh. And renew a right spirit within me. Right. And this is what the scripture says, and Peter is pointing out to all Israel as they were baptizing, just huh. showing them that it's about your spirit, it's about cleansing your mind and changing your thought process on what you used to do. Why do you commit adultery? Because in your heart, you lust after that man's woman. You went all the way and got the phone number. Well, stop getting the phone number. Stop entertaining those spirits and have a pure conscience and you won't commit adultery. So this is where the spirit was leading us. Right. You know, it wasn't leading us back into, oh, I believe, jumping around and dancing and singing. Right. And, 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 and uh, shame on these young brothers and sisters that's leading brothers and sisters back into that mentality. That's Christ. We're, we're supposed to do the baptism of Jesus Christ. Right. Okay, let's finish it. Go ahead. Um, that was the end of that. Uh, cast me not away from thy presence uh -huh. and take not thy true spirit from me. Right. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Right. Read. The the, the 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 sacrifices of the Most High jump down, right. are broken. 16. Right, go ahead. But thou desirest not sacrifice. There you go. Once again, we're talking about the the uh, Christ understanding that He came to give us. David understood this. It wasn't about the carnality of the law. Oh, you're you're washing your hands like, or or, or you're you're celebrating the Sabbath because we all keep the laws, but at the same time. Is the law going to save us? By you following the Sabbath, you follow it at every you followed it every day. You follow the Passover. You put tents up in your backyard and 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 watch TV in them for the Feast of Tabernacles. But is that going to save your spirit? Right. And this is the understanding that Christ came to came, came to give us. Go ahead. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. If you if it was a if it was about sacrifice, and this is getting me excited, <laughs> because David, during their time, they were still sacrificing. Right. But he says, if it was really about this, I would give it. I'm the king. I can, I'll give all that. Read. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. Because he understood. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is during the time of David. And what, the reason why we're showing you about David and sacrifice, remember, uh, the last show, we went into it a little more about baptism, about uh, showing that that was a custom in the law. You know, not a, a, a specific thou shall wash thyself, but in the law, it was many times it was shown, baptize yourself, cleanse yourself to be clean. So this is that custom where the, the Pharisees came up to Christ and said, wait a minute, you're, you're, uh, the apostles don't wash their hands. They're not baptizing. They're not cleansing themselves. So Christ came back and was trying to show them the understanding of the thing of the law. And this is what David understood in the spirit of the Most High. Go ahead. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. All right, what? A broken spirit. It's not about uh, giving, uh, giving animals, killing animals. Right. He understood what Christ was going to bring in the spirit. Go ahead. A broken and contrite heart. And this is where Peter is leading us to. He says, of what? Read it. But the answer of a good conscience. And the, read it again in but, Psalms. 
Uh, uh, uh -huh. uh, a broken and contrite heart. Read. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Uh huh. A broken and contrite heart. Right. Read in Peter's. But the answer of a good conscience. Read it again in Psalms. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Uh -huh. A broken and contrite heart. So, if you're saying that baptism will save you, according to Peter, according to all other scriptures, what we're going to touch on. It wasn't about the water. It was about the baptism of the spirit, cleansing your mind, your conscience, and putting away filth away from you. And that wasn't going to happen just with water. That was going to happen physically. Yes, you would cleanse your body. But spiritually is what Christ wanted us to do. And go to uh, uh, St. John 6, verse 63 real quick. Go ahead and read on. But the answer of a good conscience uh -huh. towards God. Read. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Right. So this is what Peter, what the apostles, what they were trying to show brothers and sisters. They were trying to show them, yes, go ahead and baptize, but it's not about that. It's about, it's not about the putting away of the filth of the flesh. Read. St. John 6, verse 63. Uh-huh. It is the spirit that quickened it. What did Jesus Christ say? It is the spirit that quickened it. Read. The flesh profiteth nothing. Right. The flesh don't profit. Now, once again, we want to make it clear, and we went over this last year. <coughs> the scriptures is not saying do away with the law. What it's saying really to understand. Why don't we sacrifice animals anymore? Because Christ was the last sacrifice. Why, don't, why aren't we going to be saved through water anymore? Because Christ himself was showing us it's about the inner man, the spiritual man. So for you to go on and say, oh, yeah, uh, that I was told Ephesians, you know, washing of the water by the word. Yes, that scripture still stands as the other scriptures still stand. All the scriptures still stand. So you can't just disannul and say, yeah, I was told uh, Ephesians 536, right. which we're going to go there. And I, I didn't want to go in there to show brothers that there's many other ways to go in the, the knowledge to show that. It's not about the carnal. Right. It's not about the literal. Especially works. when it comes to this topic of cleansing, because now you got people thinking uh, like these so-called Christians and Baptists. You got them thinking, oh, if, if I'm baptized, I'm saved. Right. Right. That's it. That's right. like the people coming out there. All you got to do is confess. Right. They're not giving you all the other parts to it. Right. OK. Confession is part. Right. OK. Baptism. Yes. Be baptized if you want. But is that going to save your soul? Confession is part, but is that going to save you only? It says, my little children, let us not love in word and tongue, but in deed and truth. So they're picking parts, but not giving you the full answer of all these different parts and showing, okay, this is the beginning. This is how this is going to get us to what Christ said. It's the what? 6 and 63, read it again. The spirit that quickened it. Read. The flesh profiteth nothing. Uh-huh. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Right. And this is what Christ came to show us. So especially pertaining to this John the Baptist custom right. or the custom of the spirit that he was showing that it wasn't about that. Right. Because the, the reason John the Baptist was called John the Immerser was right. because the way he came to baptize was that way. Mm -hmm. There wasn't prophets before him doing that. You don't read about right. Isaiah coming and making sure everybody was dunked in water to receive the spirit. Right. Uh, you don't read about uh, El mm. Elisha or Elijah having to be dunked in water to do that. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, the one time uh, Elisha did tell, when he told Naaman, or the, uh, Elisha told Naaman to go dunk in the river, uh -huh. you know, the dirty river, it was to clean, the, to get the leprosy off of him. Right. And that wasn't to cleanse his flesh even. It was the obedience. Obedience to right. what he said is right. what cleanses his flesh. Right. You know what I mean? So um, just, you know, on that on that note, because remember for you that are teaching these things and saying that you have these camps now and all this, you're teaching this literal thing. So your followers are now believing what? As young children, they're believing, oh, OK, so once I get dunked underwater, I could I'm still a drug dealer, but you know what? I've been baptized. It's okay now. Right. You know, um, I'm still a crip or a blood, but it's OK because I got baptized. So I'm all right. You know, I can still kill my people. I can still uh, uh, blast the dude out of his shoes for, for uh, you know, for his shoes. Mm -hmm. I can still uh, kill kill my own mother with crack and heroin. 
and I can still do I can still do these defiled acts with all multiple women and multiple men or whatever. Mm -hmm. As long, but I got baptized, so I'm fine now. Right. And that's off. You right, know, you're, right. You're not le you're not being a wise overseer of the flock when you do that. Right. Right. You know, it, right. it's it's it, right. It, it you know what though it goes back to uh, that that young brothers bringing in uh, religious things or they learned in church. Right. And not really going to the scriptures. Right. You know what I mean? Because, uh, and once again, we touched on it last show, and we're touching on it now. We wanted to give you both perspectives. But where did John the Baptist, and what was he supposed to do? Lead us to Christ. So as you got baptized, it was supposed to lead you to the true baptism, right. which was the spirit, which was cleaning your mind. And we're going to touch on that a little more. But before we do that, go to Rome, uh, Hebrews 9.23. Hebrews 9. Verse 23. And just just about the law, the law is a extensive when you go into Hebrews, when you go into Romans and Paul is speaking about the law, it's extensive and it is beautiful because it's deep. It's really deep. But you have to you, you brothers and sisters have to be taught and you have to study because when it goes into the law, Paul was trying to show us that the whole time right. about the law. Right. Once again, he said in Romans 7, 14, for the law is spiritual. And I'm carnal, sold under sin. So we didn't understand the law. And that's where you're bringing brothers and sisters back to is that that saying that the uh, it, the things of the law is going to save you. That's ignorance, right. because it, and once again, we don't eat pork. We don't eat shrimp, crab, lobster. We follow the Sabbath. But we know that the grace above all, because the law is so it's so technical that as we try to follow it to our best ability. Right. You know what I mean? We don't eat the pork, the shrimp, the crab, lobster. We follow the holidays. We, uh, you know, uh, do the ceremonies, Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, uh, all the holidays in the scriptures. But, you know, it, the law is so technical, you can't even mix cloth, right. fabric. So grace was given to where we fell short. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. So Paul even comes back, and I don't want to make this a law class, but Paul comes back and says, for the people that say, well, do we eat pork? Uh, we can eat pork. It says, do we make void the law through faith? God forbid. So showing you that they coincide. We keep the laws. But at the same time, we're supposed to understand that the spiritual aspects, these things are going to really bring us to Christ. You know, uh, not just the carnal actions of the law. Right. And it's like, uh, you know, like I talked to a brother about the Sabbath, you know, the other day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had to explain to him that, you know, remember Christ said the Sabbath was made for man, uh -huh. not man for the Sabbath. Because, you know, you got brothers and sisters out there that are, you know, they, they, they're not being able to pay their rent. They're not able to feed themselves because they're telling their bosses, uh, the, the prospective bosses that, hey, I don't work on the Sabbath. Right. And their boss is like, OK, well, we're not going to hire you. Or, right. We're going to fire you at a certain point. Right. And the thing is, it's like you got to remember. Listen, what he said, if your if your ass were to fall in the hole, right, would you not pull him out on the Sabbath day, right? You know, he gave you the understanding. There of you the go. Law. And and it's <laughs> like we're forgetting that. Well, right. We're we're using and this is what happens with religions. We're using one part. Religions are use one part. Right. And then they won't go to the other part to get the full understanding. And I, that's what I wanted to say earlier was a. Uh, you know, the, why do we as Hebrew Israelites, why do we draw away from those things that the, the church teaches? Why do we draw away from a lot of church teachings and, and a lot of church customs? Because they use that as a tool to, to pull us astray from the most high. Yeah. It was, okay, you've been dunked underwater. You don't need this anymore. Forget Psalms 119 and 9. This is wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to your word. <laughs> no, you can just be dunked underwater and forget about that. You don't have to read that, but make sure you put your money in the plate. So we pull away from those customs, the Halloween, the Easter, the Christmas. We pulled away from those customs to be free. Like Christ said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. But now you guys are going full circle back to the church customs and leading your young followers back into the bondage you were, you were redeemed out of by the word. And that's not fair to your followers. To, to bring them back to, you know, right. oh, you have to be baptized. And that's why I'm saying, you know, got to reiterate, we're not saying dunking underwater is bad. We're not saying that if you want to do your little holy water, whatever you're, you know, doing with water. We're not saying it's evil. But at the same time, is that the requisite? Is that what's the necessity 
No, the necessity was like we read in Psalms, right. the the cleansing of your conscience, the, or the, like we read in First Peter, the cleansing of your conscience. There you go. Uh, in Psalms, the contrite heart, the breaking of your spirit. Mm -hmm. That that's the necessity. Otherwise, the Most High don't care how many baths you take. He doesn't care how many uh, dunks in water you have. You still got those pictures. He doesn't care how many, how much sprinkling you got, you know, from the Pope or whoever. The water doesn't matter. He makes it rain on the just and the unjust. Mm -hmm. He said that. That doesn't make the unjust just just because they went outside in the rain. That doesn't make uh, this this man stop touching little boys just because he gets dunked underwater. I don't know him, but you know, you know, that's the typical look, right? <laughs> <laughs> it, that doesn't make this man stop stop uh, uh, sniffing cocaine or whatever. You know what I mean? Like I said, I don't know these people, but it's not gonna change them because he sat in his bathtub with this man and went underwater. the The point of it is that you gotta stop teaching your followers, your young followers, that this is the way. The, yeah. the baptism in water, the immersing in water is the way. Right, and, and show them how to use the scriptures and, and, and use the scriptures. Let's do it like this. Go to Colossians. You know what? Before we go there, go to St. John 3, verse 3. St. John 3, verse 3. And let's go back. Let's go back to Christ, and let's read a few more scriptures about what he's <coughs> saying about this. St. John, chapter 3, verse 3. Uh-huh. Jesus answered and said unto them, uh -huh. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, uh -huh. he cannot see the kingdom of the Most High. Right. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Right. So now we're, now we're understanding that there's symbolism in the Bible. Right. You know, because it seems like brothers forgot that too. Right. That, that there's parables, parables, allegories, that the Bible's written that way. Right. So, yes, he didn't just mean, okay, you got to be born again. Right. We got to shove you back. We got to shove you back <laughs> in your mom's. Right? He didn't mean that. Go ahead. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Right. And obviously Nicodemus didn't understand. Right. And this is where we're coming and we're dealing with Israel. We're dealing with the religions is that they didn't understand. They don't, they don't understand the spiritual thing that Christ was supposed to bring. Right. The spiritual aspect. Go ahead. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, mm -hmm. he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, there you go. We know a man is born. When he is born, he has to have water physically, right. and he has to have spirit. And I got to clear this up because we had a brother attack me on this one. But uh, yeah, okay. the water is talking about the water in the amniotic sac of the woman right. when you're in the womb. So... It's not talking about this water, this, you know, I mean, this jug of water we have here. It's talking about the, the water. A man has to be born on the earth. <laughs> right, right. But right. He, he, it is speaking from, right, it's speaking, but that's the basics. Right. You know <laughs> what I mean? This is what he's tripped up on. The, see, you have to be born of the water. <laughs> you got to be dunked under right. the water. Right. See, and that's the thing, that they're not getting the basics Mm -hmm. before he's trying to jump into something else. And the thing is, is that it, it, it's speaking of physical, right. it's speaking of spiritual. Right. You know, and that's why I said about allegory and parables is that you, you do have to be born of the water. Right. But what water was the Bible telling us? Where does the Bible lead us to and what does it say about the water? That's the question. Right. To only find out about this water, we... Went to First Peter's. It tells us. Right. Or you got St. John 7 and 38 and 39. There you go. We're go let's go there. Go there real quick. Same. I don't want to quote them. If we're going to quote them, just pull them. Go ahead. St. John chapter 7 and verse 38. Uh -huh. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his bellies shall flow rivers of living water. Go ahead. Verse 39. But this he spake. This spake he of the spirit. So the living water that was going to flow out of this man's belly was right. that he was literally going to vomit up water out of his belly right. and, or burst asunder with water. There you go. With H2O or what was he saying? Read but, it again. But this he spake of the spirit. Right. See that? This spake he of the spirit. See that? Right. So th this is what was going to come out of that man. Read on. Which they that believeth on, on him should receive the Holy Spirit. Right. For those, those that believe on Christ, like when you read all through the uh, the other scriptures, we mm -hmm. can pull 
the many scriptures we could pull up. We're going to go there. Go, go to it. Go to St. John 17 and 17. We might as well go through it. Right. Well, I'm, I'm talking about when you read all of, through Acts and you yeah. know, of all the baptisms, you find out that they all receive the word of Christ first. Right. They all receive that, oh, okay, I have to live this to death. I have to do these things and, and be there for my brother and do, the, and do these works and have faith. Right. And that's when they got the symbolic dunking in water. Right. They, after they received the word. Right, right. You know what I mean? So even here. Not, not that the word saved us. Right. But the that uh, excuse me, not that the water saved us, right? But the word saved us, right? Right. Read that St. John seventeen and seventeen. Sanctify them through thy truth. Uh huh. Thy word is truth. Right. So once again, these this this word sanctify water, mm -hmm. this water word coming out of your belly is right. used in that symbolism form, showing you that it was the word. Right. It was the washing of the water <laughs> by the word. Right. These things were going to cleanse you. Right. You know what right. I mean? And if you didn't understand <laughs> and you weren't clear, Peter himself reminded you right. not the taking away of the filth of the flesh. Right. Right. If you didn't understand what all, all this was about, you know what I mean? And you weren't clear. Right. So the, uh, go ahead. Did you finish that? That was finished. Yeah. Okay. Go back to St. John uh, 3 where you left off at. St. John 3 in verse 6. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm sorry, verse 5. Uh -huh. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, mm -hmm. he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Right, so now we're dealing with this, you cannot be saved unless you're baptized. Right. It's telling us there, if you don't receive the water and the Spirit, you cannot be saved. Now, we have to understand what water was he talking about? Was it just phys was it physical water? Was it that we dunk ourselves and we're baptized and then we're saved? Was that it? Let's go back to 1 Peter 3 and 21 and let's read it again. Let's read it again so we can get some clarity on what Christ was saying. Because remember, Paul, excuse me, Peter was sitting right there, was listening. Right. Right? <laughs> so what did he... Was he going to come and contradict Christ or was he going to clarify it for all the young brothers and sisters to understand? OK, well, I, I, I washed myself. I'm cleansed. Right. I'm saved. Read. Verse two, uh, first Peter chapter three and verse twenty one. Uh -huh. The light figure where whereunto even baptism doeth also now save us. Read. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. I mean, what is more clear than that? <laughs> what is more clear than telling you? Himself, out of his own mouth, Peter, that not the putting away of the filth of flesh. That's not going to save you. Go ahead. But the answer of a good conscience. The what? The answer of a good conscience. Yeah, I want to nail this. I want to drill this in the brothers and sisters' head oh. so they can really understand. It's about your conscience. It's about your mind letting that spirit enter into you, the spirit of wisdom, that right. can come out and flow li rivers of living water. Right. The life. You got some? Go ahead. Read back down in uh, John. All right. First, uh, I'm sorry. John chapter 3 and verse 6. Read. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And this is what we're not understanding, that that's carnal. Mm -hmm. That what John, John the Baptist was doing was carnal. It was fleshly. It was to show us about the spirit and the things that was going to lead us to Christ. Go ahead. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Uh-huh. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Read. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh. Once and again, more symbolism. Right. So are we supposed to just be outside in the wind? <laughs> right, right. It's more symbolism. <laughs> like, come on, man, we got to wake up. Right. The scriptures is using this, these parables. That's why Christ said, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear. Because all these symbolism and parables that he was using, it wasn't meant for everybody. But now we have the understanding, and Peter, Paul, they made it even that much more clear. Read. <coughs> Verse 7, Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. There it is. 
And that's what he was saying that we were going to be born of. But go to 1 Corinthians 15, 46 really quick. And this is, uh, once again, touching on the law aspect that we have to really see. We have to, we have to really understand what Christ was trying to show us. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 46. Uh-huh. How be it that was not first, which is spiritual. That's why Paul, I mean, excuse me, <laughs> that's why John didn't bat baptize with water. Read it one more time for them. Uh, how be it that was not first, which is spiritual. It, and yes, this is in context of what we're talking about. Why? Because the Old Testament, right. the, <laughs> old, the Old Testament, the law was not spiritual because all we did was do it. All we did was, like you said, oh, I'm baptized, I'm saved. No, you're not. Right. You can baptize yourself all you want. You are not saved. Right. It was spiritual, but we weren't using it. Spiritual. Right. We weren't, we weren't <laughs> spiritual enough to understand it. Right. So Christ had to get, give us that understanding. Go ahead. So now that we're free from that, <laughs> you know, we can't go back into understanding that, okay, the, now the now the law is spirit. You know now that we're going to use Paul, the law. Paul said it himself. He said you're going to take me back into bondage. <laughs> right, right. You know what I mean? And and he was saying because now you don't understand what the law was here for. The law was to keep us away from sin. <laughs> right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So like I said, we could go into Romans seven. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, this is what you know. Uh, you can tell brothers are young because, and when I say young, I'm not talking about an age. I'm speaking of. They ain't studied. They ain't in the scriptures to bring out all the different perspectives on that topic of baptism. It's just, not, it's just it, it doesn't end just with being baptized with water and you're done and that's it, the kingdom. That's like the religion saying all you have to do is confess with your mouth. Right. And you're saved. The scriptures say that. Right. But is that it? <laughs> if that was it, then why we got all these different intriguing uh, themes that we have to do. Right. What's up with the fiery trial that it talks about later? In there you go. Four? You know, <laughs> what, why do we got to go through the fiery trial to try us? Right. If that's all we got. to Oh, I accept Jesus in my heart and I'm, I'm zapped up to heaven. Right. I mean, all right, get dunked underwater and the beam of light should come down and I should disappear off the earth. Yeah. It's like Enoch, right? You're righteous now. Right. That's not how it works. <laughs> Read on. How be it? That was not first which is spiritual. Read. But that which is natural. Read. And afterward, that which is spiritual. Right. Now, we don't have the we don't have the time to go over the whole chapter, but once again, it is in context of the chapter. Go and read the chapter, and what it's showing you is that the first man, Adam, the, the from Adam to Christ, it was it wasn't spiritual because we weren't a spiritual people. We didn't understand till Christ. Don't drag us back and to this carnal mentality and, and, and uh, taking pride in the carnal things rather in the, in the spiritual, you know, uh, rather, or you know what, even having a balance in that. Right. Okay, so uh, go back to John, St. John. Let's finish that up. Did you finish that? Uh-huh. Um, you want on nine? Uh, go ahead. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, mm -hmm. how can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel? Right, that, that's it on that. Let's go from there. Now, now let's go to the famous Ephesians 5 and 26. Ephesians and chapter 5. Now we're, now we're understanding. Once again, I want brothers and sisters to think. Why did Peter point it out to brothers and sisters about baptism? That it wasn't the putting away the filth of the flesh. Because you had Israelites, you had our people in that mind state. So he had to remind him it's not about that. Paul himself, he comes back and he makes a point also, read. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. Why is he using, why is he using that, those words? He could have used anything else. But why is he using the washing of the water by the word? Let's think. Because Israel was so technical, sure. and it, just like they are now, not only technical, they were so carnal-minded, and they wanted the, the truth, the easy way out. 
Oh, I gotta do, all I got to do is go to church on Sunday once a week. All I got to do is wash myself with water, and I'm good. I'm saved. No, you're not. Right. That ain't even, that, that's not even the point. <laughs> this all that note, if I can get uh, Jeremiah 2 and 2. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to finish this Ephesians 5. I'm going to let you, go ahead, read that. Ephesians 5, 26, read it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. Uh-huh. That he might present it to himself, a glorious church. The, the true, why David said it wasn't of sacrifice, else would I give it. Right. The sacrifices of the Most High are broken and contrite mind, a broken and contrite heart. Be, this is what Peter knew, Paul knew. This is what the apostles knew. Right. As Israel were, once again, because this is where brothers going to go, but they were still baptizing. As they were baptizing, he was reminding them, it's not about that. <laughs> <laughs> this is why these scriptures are here to show us. It wasn't about the baptism, the physical water. It was about cleaning your mind, your spirit. Go to Colossians, uh, Ephesians 4, 22. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 22. Uh -huh, and then we're going to go to Jeremiah. Go ahead. That you put off concerning the former conversation, uh -huh. the old man. So we're talking about, once again, putting off the old ways. Right. This is the born again. You know, whether you look at it as born again, resurrection, baptize, uh, uh, like he's saying here, putting off the old man, the new man. Those are all the same thing. Right. You know, being born again is the same thing as saying you being baptized or renewed. You're being renewed to life right. or resurrection, meaning the old man is dying and the new man is being renewed. These are all the same thing. And they're just using it, these uh, these symbolism in different ways, like Christ did. Read which is corruptible according to the deceitful lust. Right, so the old man, it wasn't just about him dunking himself in water. He had to actually do something. He had to put away the way he was talking. Right. <laughs> you know, I heard that before. Brothers say, oh, you don't got to really, you don't got to change who you are. Yes, you do. You got to change who you, how you talk. Right. If you curse all the time and you yelling, you yelling and screaming and cursing all the time, that's something you got to work on. Right. That corrupt communication. That's, I mean, we're all guilty of it. Mm -hmm. But but for us to think, oh, you know, I just go ahead and dump, take a shower and pray to the Most High, it's going to be gone away. No, it's not. Prayer isn't just it. You can pray all you want. But if you're not putting forth the spirit, the works, with a pure conscience, it is not going to change you. Let's finish it. Verse 23. Uh-huh. And be renewed. In the spirit of your mind. Be renewed which way? In the spirit of your mind. This is in accordance with what Peter was saying. Right. That it's purifying your conscience, yeah. your thought process. Yeah. See, but then it, it, what's tight about this, was, what's beautiful about this is that he's showing us through our actions. Right. First of all, you got to stop lying. You got to put away the evil you're doing. You were going to go somewhere? Oh, yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, uh, we're going to rewind it a little bit. Uh, yeah, back yeah. Back to that, <laughs> the Ephesians 5 that you just read. Uh -huh. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse uh, 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing by the water of the word. Right, word. right. By the washing of the water. See, so right there you got to stop, right? By the washing of water. See, you need water, right? But let's go to Jeremiah 2 and 22. Right. Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 22. For though thou wash thee... With nit with nit nitre. Nitre, right? Nitre is a cleaning agent. It was a mixture of uh, animal fats and soot that came from the animal sacrifices that we did on the high hills. It washed down into the water. I'm giving you the background real fast, but it washed down into the water and it became a chemical. It's it's how you make soap now. So he said, though you though you wash you with nitre, which was an acidic compound that would help wash your clothes. That's why people were washing those rivers. Uh, though you wash you with nitre. Right. If you wash with this acidic compound, it'll burn all the dirt off of your clothes and your body. Right. And what? And take the much soap. Right. Now, nitre is activated by water. So you're in the water having to wash with the nitre and the soap. So even though you're washing the water, reading back in 5 and 26, right, in mm -hmm. Ephesians, uh, that he might sanctify and cleanse it by the washing of water. Right. If you do that and take soap and water and nitre. Right. If you do those things, what's going to happen? Read. Yet thine iniquity. Yet your what? Iniquity. Your what? Iniquity. Your sins, read. Is marked before me. You didn't wash off the sin. 
So it doesn't matter that you got dunked in water. He's showing you right there. You can go back to Ephesians 5.26 and, and stop right there like a lot of brothers and sisters like to do, that especially of these, these newly sprung up camps. But <coughs> the thing is, is you're going you're gonna to try to stop right there when he clearly said, by the word. Right. And you know what? You know what? Very good point is that, brothers and sisters, uh, these Baptists that are calling themselves Israelites or Methodists or, or uh, you know, uh, Roman Catholic Church that are coming in and trying to and say you're Israelite. We all know this, that the true Israelites know that the scriptures say you must go precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. And thereby, when you read, you will get understanding. Okay, Isaiah 28 and then Ephesians. Okay, so let's, let's understand, brothers and sisters, we can't deal with a subject and then make our assumption uh, or, or, and this is, this is like basic learning 101. Right. <laughs> like you can't take something like the religions do. They take love and they say God is love. You, they take that one scripture and then base God off that one scripture. There's so many other things that are going to give you the full understanding of what the most high is. He is love, but it's going to be out of context if you don't show him that God hates, right. God kills. You understand? So this is where we get in these topics and these young brothers, you pull one scripture and be like, oh, yeah, but there's many other scriptures that's going <coughs> to give you understanding on that topic. Right, right. It's going to give you understanding on that point that right. is being made. You know, so that's why that's how you look. You look ignorant if uh, you don't give a, a, a full circumference of that topic. Right. And that's what I wanted to do. And I'm hoping we've done that. We not only try we not only try to void out the baptism part or them physically doing the baptism. They did. Right. But what was the point that the apostles came back and was showing them? It's not about that. You understand? Right, right. Go, but go ahead. Let's finish it. Oh, that was that was it on that. Uh huh. Um, and just, you know, I don't know if you had any more. Yeah. Questions. Yeah. I wanted to go to Colossians. Oh, yeah. yeah. Colossians three and nine. Yeah. The, the famous basic scriptures we know is Israel. But uh, read that again. Colossians 3 and 9. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 9. Uh-huh. Lie not one to another. Uh-huh. Seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Right. Remember, when we talk about baptism, resurrection, being born again, putting off the old man, it's all the same thing. It's being renewed. Right. So, so the scriptures is showing us this change has to come about by putting off the old ways of thinking. It's going to tell us. Go ahead. Verse 10. Uh-huh. And have put on the new man, uh -huh. which is renewed in the knowledge. Right. This is this, this is why people think the Bible is a fluke right. and the Bible is a lie, because they read over here where it says baptism or Jesus loves. Right. And then when they finally get told the truth and show that Christ called the Ethiopian woman a dog, then they're like, wait a minute. That's not Jesus. That's love. not Jesus. That's not Jesus love. But they never really were taught the Bible in truth. Right. So it kind of shocks them. Right. And, and it, knowing that, wait a minute, there's more of the Bible that it puts the spirit, it puts things in, in the true context of what we're supposed to be learning, whatever topic it is. Right. You know, whether it's faith. You know, everybody says, well, if you, you got religions that say, well, it, it, it's about you believing. But then the scripture comes back and says, faith without works is dead. But because they left faith without works is dead out, now you got that individual on, oh, yeah, uh, Jesus loves. All I got to do is believe. Right, right. So now you got them screwed up in the head because they, didn't, they weren't taught the right way and they didn't go into the scriptures and study and say, wait a minute, no. Paul, Peter and Paul, they're not contradicting Christ. So what are they doing? They're bringing things in context to what Christ was teaching. Right. Like you got the churches right. stick their hand in the box of snakes because they are just on faith. You know what I mean? But they're forgetting that the rest of the scriptures tell you thou shalt not tempt the most high. There you, you go. Know? You don't stick there your you hand go. in boxes of snakes. There you go. You know? <laughs> not on purpose. You know? There you go. Read out. Read out. Let's finish it. And have put on the new man, uh -huh. which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him. Right. So when it said, when Peter came and said that it 
purifies your conscience or that it, you, your conscience is supposed to be renewed, then Paul came back and said that the washing of the water by the word, then it, you come here in Colossians, he's coming back again and saying that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Then you got Christ saying it's the spirit that quickeneth, the fresh prophet of nothing. N now you're getting the full understanding of how we're supposed to look at baptism, not just one-sided. Go ahead. What you were going to go? Go to. Um, it was in Zondervan, uh, Pictorial Bible Dictionary. Yeah. And uh, I don't want to take too much of your time. Over no, it looks like we got six minutes. Go ahead. Uh, feel free, brothers and sisters, to read, to get your Zondervan, your Pictorial Bible Dictionary. Look up baptism. Read the whole thing. I'm going to pull out a couple of uh, main parts here, but even the so-called white man knows the, the significance of the dunking underwater. Right. You know, and that's why I wanted to bring this out because a lot of, you know, a lot of our people, they don't want to believe unless the white man tells them anything. Right, right. So, uh, Not that we need it. Let's right. make that clear. <laughs> we made it clear through the scriptures, but for everybody else, this is for the uh, others, brothers and sisters that, right. you know, need that. <laughs> so uh, the first part, it says uh, baptism, a term derived from the Greek baptisma, uh, antecedent baptizo, the etymologi etymological significance of the word. So the origin of the word, right, the, its significance in its origin uh, often has been obscured by a lack of exegetical clarity. And that just means that people haven't studied enough into it to, clear, to clarify it from, oh, do you have to be baptized with water or not? All right, so that's what they're saying here. Um, and says, and by forced interpretation. So a lot of people are forcing a certain interpretation of baptism on people and saying, this is how you have to be saved. One sided. Right. They're bringing out one part of the scriptures, but not the other side to get the understanding. Exactly. Um, it says, uh, its true meaning can be found only in its usage and its theological significance. Its antecedent meaning, now this means the, the meaning it came from when it first came out. Its antecedent meaning uh, involves its Judaic uh, usage in the Old Testament times and it's practiced by John the Baptist. So where it came from was John the Baptist. Where it came from was how brothers and sisters used to, used to dunk things in water and dunk themselves in water and clean themselves after sex or anything else. Um, its incipient meaning, meaning the actual meaning, lies in Christ's baptism and his interpretation of it. Uh, its formal meaning is to be found in its apostolic interpretation, particularly Pauline. So what he's showing you is the actual meaning of the word is found when you watch how Christ baptized. Now, right. the scriptures tell you Christ himself immersed not. He baptized not. He did not dunk people in water. His baptism was with what? As John put it, the Holy Spirit and with fire. Right. That's what John's baptism was representative of. Right. And, and that's why you got the the apostles afterward, the prophets afterward, right. going and sh giving the people the understanding right. of what it is. Brothers and sisters, we're here. When is our show being changed to? Quick. Uh, it's going to be on Sun after no November 23rd. It'll be every Saturday from uh, 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 it's 8 to 9 p.m. There it is. So look out for us on there and YouTube, and we like to say shalom. Shalom. shalom.